Hi, my name is Rhys Luck and I'm presenting this video on behalf of Starbeck Educational Resources. Starbeck Educational Resources is the specialist school supplier of inexpensive, exciting and unusual history, art, religious and cultural artefacts. Whether you are an existing customer of Starbeck Educational Resources or are looking into buying from us for the first time, we hope this video will allow you to visualise the contents of one of our exciting Starbuckses. In this case, the Stone Age Starbucks. Our Stone Age Starbucks comprises 17 items. However, if you are looking for a smaller selection of these Stone Age artefacts, we also have a Stone Age value box on offer, which contains nine items. I note before we begin this video that the first nine items I will show you today are the items that make up our Stone Age value box which go together with the last eight items I will show you today to form our Stone Age Starbucks. A reminder of this can be found in the description below. Okay, let's begin. Here is the first item in both our Starbucks and our value box, the wooden pot with skin lid. Now, don't let the name of this era deceive you. Not all Stone Age materials were made of stone. It is known in fact that hollowed out bones and wood were commonly used to carry items, for storage as well, and also as bowls for eating. This wooden pot perhaps would have contained water or berries for easier transportation. As you will see here, this wooden pot is completed with a decorative animal skin lid. The pot itself is around 20 centimetres tall. Okay, moving on to another piece of crockery. This, you can see here, is a Neolithic bowl. As I hope you can tell from the visual here, it is an authentic, handcrafted reproduction of a Stone Age bowl made especially for Starbeck Educational Resources by our friends at Potted History. I'm sure you'll agree that this is a stunning, authentic replica of a smoke-fired, decorated bowl that was used in the Neolithic Age. It is approximately 14.5 centimetres wide and 6 centimetres tall, which we hope makes it rather convincing for purpose. Okay, let's take a look now at some items of clothing and jewellery from the Stone and Bronze Ages. Here are a pair of child's leather shoes. Now these are a reproduction of typical Neolithic children's shoes made from just one piece of leather. We also have items of jewellery in both our Starbucks and our value box. The first you can see here is a wild boar's tusk necklace. Now this is a convincing reproduction of a wild boar's tusk on twine. Wild boar would have been hunted for food, but their skins and tusks would have also been worn for decoration. They would have been considered somewhat of a trophy to celebrate the hunter's achievement in having caught and killed a large, dangerous animal. Okay. Another item of trophy jewellery is this replica mammoth tooth pendant. Now this prehistoric piece would have been made from a slice of mammoth tooth and attached to a leather necklace. I'm sure you'll agree that the people of the Paleolithic and Neolithic ages were rather violent in their ways.
Speaking of the violent tendencies of this time, here is a superb replica flint arrowhead. Now these vary in size within our star boxes and value boxes, but this particular one is around 8 centimetres long. Another Neolithic tool is this flint hand tool. Now again these vary in size within our boxes, but this one is around 9 centimetres wide. This tool would have been used to scrape animal hides, for example for the production of skins, one of which you will see shortly as a content of just our star box. Okay. We also have this. This horn needle. It's another example of a tool that would have been used during the Stone Ages. And in fact, this here is a polished cow horn needle, which would likely have been used in exactly the same way that we use clothing needles today. For example, for making and repairing items of clothing. And to give you an idea, this needle is approximately 10 centimetres in size. The ninth and final item in our value box is this Stone Age display drape. Now, as you can see, this is quite big. I'll just try and fold it out for you here. And would make an ideal table covering, or perhaps could even act as a wall or floor covering for your classroom Stone Age display. It is made from cotton fabric and printed on both sides with images and visuals of Stone Age life, making it a perfect addition to any interactive classroom displays on the Stone Age. Okay, so we've now seen all the contents of our Stone Age value box, but we still have eight further artefacts to show you from our Stone Age Starbucks. Let's go back then to our Stone Age crockery and drinkware. Here I have a natural cow horn. Now this horn would have been used both for drinking and for storage, but note that it's rather roughly finished and unpolished. So it's perhaps not quite the same sort of luxury item of drinkware used by the Vikings and the Romans, for example. We also have these scallop shells, which we sell as a pair. Now these would have likely been used as bowls, because they were so easy to find around the Stone Age coastlines, but it is quite possible that they were also used as tools. Now, let's revisit our Stone Age weaponry. I have here a replica flint spearhead. Now, much like our other replica weapons within the Starbucks and the value box earlier on, these vary in size, but the one I've got here to show you is around 13 centimetres long. You may already have noticed a theme with regards to our Stone Age weaponry. A lot of it was made from flint. And this next item is no exception. What we have here is a replica flint axe. Now these also vary in size within our star boxes, but this one in particular is around 30 centimetres long. It's perhaps worth noting here that flint was so valuable as a tool and as a weapon due to its properties as a sedimentary rock. It's very hard and durable, and when you break flint in just the right way, it breaks into uniform flakes with a very sharp edge, both sides here. Now those responsible for the creation of weaponry during these times would have known that if they took a large piece of flint and hit it with another rock or bone, it would break in a predictable and controllable way, unlike many other kinds of rocks, which would just shatter and splinter. And this is even one aspect of life which characterised the name we now give to this era. Okay, moving away again from the weaponry, this is perhaps one of the most impressively made items in our Stone Age Starbucks. An animal skin in a frame. 
Now this consists of real animal skin stretched out in a frame that's made from rawhide and branches. Now I did allude to animal skins earlier on. Animal skins would have been worn during the Stone Ages to keep warm. And we think that the process went something like this. The skins would have been sewn together using needles, similar to the horn needle that you saw earlier in this demonstration. Scrapers would have then been used to scrape off the flesh and the muscle, and the skins were then tanned, sometimes even using the animal's brain, to make it soft and flexible. And here I was thinking that we've moved on from the violence. Now, one of the animals hunted for their skins may well have been a bison, as represented here by this toy bison. This is a roughly carved wooden model of a bison, and it would have likely been used as a toy played with by children. Bison were often depicted in cave paintings, and would have been hunted for their meat and for their skins. So I suppose this toy bison, you might say, is a way of getting the children involved rather early in the ways of this era. Now, we've got just two more items to go from our Stone Age Starbucks, and I'm sure you'll agree that we've already seen a fantastic range of contents. The penultimate item is this small Stonehenge model. Now, this is the resin model of Stonehenge, known to be one of the world's most important Stone Age monuments. And it's rather fascinating to think that Stonehenge was constructed using tools made from stone and bone. Now last but not least, we've got this medium hematite. Now I know you can't feel this, but it is rather heavy. And it makes sense to finish on this item in the video, because it's one thing that signals the transition from the Stone and Bronze Ages to the new Iron Age, where tools, weapons and jewellery were made from hard metal. Now again, the hematite within our Starboxes will vary in size, but they're most likely to be within 5 and 7 centimetres. Now the hematite would have involved the extraction of iron, by crushing rocks to a powder and then by smelting it in a very hot fire or furnace. The iron would have then been broken up into small pieces and refired to remove any impurities before being forged into shape. Well there we have it. I hope you found this video demonstration useful in helping to visualise the contents of one of our fantastic range of star boxes. Now if you've got any questions at all about anything to do with today's video, or about our Stone Age star box or value box in particular, then please do get in touch, either via email at info at starbeck.education, or by calling us on 01530 eight three six one 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 may I also take this opportunity to recommend that you visit our website that's www.starbeck.education where you'll find more of our specialist products including a further range of star boxes on other topics that we have to offer now thank you very much for watching today's video and i bid you goodbye for now